right here. Okay. Great. Everyone can see the slides? Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Okay, folks. Right. So we're going to get started. Uh, today is all about talking about a peaceful night of sleep um, and some implementable tips that you're going to be able to take from today just in order to improve not only uh, the length of your sleep, if that's something you want to work on, trying to get a bit more sleep, but also then the quality of your sleep. Um, so just to, to begin with, I have to say thank you to Margot for, for all the work that she's put in and helped me with these slides. Uh, I'll, I'm responsible for any typos. She's responsible for the pretty slides. So uh, just a thank you to her. And now we're just going to crack on with it. So um, what we are going to discuss is um, the Peak Performance Codes. So you're joining the first session of it. What is it? It's a 10-week transformation program. So every week on Sunday morning, I'm going to be doing a 60-minute live workshop, which you will be able to join. Or there will also be a recorded version made available afterwards if you can't make it. What is it going to be? It's going to be the kickstart to massive positive change in your life. So it's for people who have a desire to change old unhelpful habits for newer and improved ones, never to look back. So the idea is that this is change that's going to be able uh, to, to stay with you for the rest of your life. Number two, then, is a desire to have more impact. So what that would be is getting more done in less time with, with even better quality and then having more time spent with loved ones and on your hobbies um, in the evenings. And also a feeling that you just have more to give um, and you want to get that out of you. So that's the kind of person that I'm looking to attract uh, to this program. So you're getting access to a lifetime of study and learnings from myself, uh, which I've come across to being a high performer in the fields of sports, academia um, and theatre. So there are a lot of different learnings there, but also just from my own uh, pursuits in terms of uh, nutrition, personal training qualifications. Um, sales and marketing just over the years. There's a lot of uh, kind of hacks that I've learned that I'm really excited to, to give to you and, and things that I've invested quite a bit of money in, et cetera. And so you're getting all the best of the information that I've accessed over the years. So there's a little kind of menu. You can have just a little look at that for an idea of what's coming over the next 10 weeks. And why I'm beginning with sleep is that I feel it is the most underestimated element of performance um, you know you'll often hear people talking about you know getting in better shape and then it's exercise and nutrition are typically the ones you hear of first but I hope by the end of this presentation you'll see that a vital missing link in, in much of the discourse in health and wellness is actually um, sleep. So a couple of ground rules here uh, slash rules for life uh, I want you to go all in for the next hour. Just try and get the most out of this presentation. Um, so just give it your all and uh, see what you can get out of it. Fully invest in it. I'd like you to adapt a beginner's mindset. So if you feel like you already know quite a bit on the topic, I'd like you to be open to at least being swayed uh, on your opinions if you find that you come across something better here. Also, if, if you feel like um, there's something that I say that you don't quite agree with, then there's a Q&A at the end um, where we'll be able to discuss some of those and maybe discuss what works well for you or some challenges you might be having. Because I know that there's probably a lot of answers uh, within here. And that's my point on sharing is caring. So just getting your what works for you out there during that Q&A and maybe any issues you might be having, and you might realize that we're kind of all uh, encountering the similar issues when it comes to sleep. So this is a mantra of mine about, um, you know, just living your life in the present and not focusing in on the grievances of the past. OK, coming to terms with the past is a massive, massive part of just becoming your best self in the here and now and going forward. So no matter what's happened to you in the past or, you know, take responsibility for your role in it. We've all been hard done by at different stages in our life, but it's how you react to that, what you learn from that situation. And it's about having three simple things, approaching each day with your head up, head held high, looking forward. So looking forward, looking ahead of you. What's today's challenges? What am I looking to achieve in the future? Remembering that every day is a big day. So it's not the... 
It's not the weddings. It's not the celebrations of uh, graduations. It's not the big football matches. Our everyday lives, the nitty gritty of everyday life, and trying to embrace that and seize the day that's ahead of us is just the best way of living life. Lastly, I want you to have a bit of fun here today. You're giving up your time. You've, uh, you've got through the technical difficulties with me there to make sure that this goes ahead. So I want you to, um, yeah, we're going to start by saying this little tongue twister. Uh, you don't need to unmute yourself. I trust that you're doing it, okay? I trust you. You've got this. So we're all going to do it together. We have to say the following line five times really fast and loud. So it's sensible Sally slumber sleepily. I did it slow there just so I could get the words out, right? So on three, we're all going to go together. Three, two, one. Sensible Sally slumber sleepily. Sensible Sally slumber sleepily. Sensible Sally. Blah, blah, blah. I'm gone. I hope you did better than me. I got two and a half. All right, let's crack in to the information. So what will I learn? Number one, you're going to learn about the impact of sleep. And folks, we've got a bit of a sleep epidemic on our hands in the modern world. Human beings were not built to cut back on sleep, which is the whole idea of an alarm. We come from, from caveman days whereby people fell asleep uh, and woke up and they rose with the sun. Okay, that was our, and then the light bulb came along about 150 years ago and things have rapidly changed since then. That has had ramifications. I, I need to tell you about the, peer, the pain points before we get into the really juicy kind of solution mode. Number two then is, am I getting enough sleep? I'm gonna give you a little exercise that's gonna hopefully uh, get you to realize how sleep deprived you are or if you're sleep deprived at all. Then we're going to look at some actions you can take during the day. So uh, things that you can do way earlier in the day. So actually getting good sleep can start way earlier in the day than most of us actually think. How looking after your sleep cave is very important. Looking after your sleep runway is equally important. So that's that kind of error leading up to bedtime. What to do when I just can't sleep? So there's some really interesting research around this, um, the old wives' tale of counting sheep and, and that sort of stuff. So that's kind of an interesting one about where that all came from. We'll be going into that. And then some optional homework resources that you can do if this is an area that you really kind of want to work on a bit. Um, and hopefully you'll find those documents useful. So let's talk a little bit about the impact of sleep. So. It has a tremendous impact on mind, body, and soul. In order to make it a superpower, we need to start with the bad news. Okay, so one word's jumping out there, testicles. Okay, I'm sorry, uh, it's too early for that sort of crack. Men who sleep five hours per night have significantly smaller testicles than those who sleep seven hours or more. So folks, the impact is also on our body. We're seeing the impact of sleep on the body. But what about wellness and sleep? I'm not, this one is, is also related to men, but don't worry, women will be touching on the impact of sleep as well for you. So men who routinely sleep just four to five hours a night will have a level of testosterone, which is that of someone 10 years their senior. So a lack of sleep will age a man by a decade in terms of that critical aspect of well-being. And lastly, what about women? We see equivalent impairments in female reproductive health, health caused by a lack of sleep. Okay, so really important to, to keep this in mind. Now, another couple of points, body composition and sleep. Just one night of poor sleep can le lead to dramatic changes in appetite. I'm sure we've all had that. It changes our willpower, it changes our appetite. This is why compared to people who get a full night of sleep, people who sleep six hours a night are 23% more likely to be obese. Beauty and sleep. So beauty and sleep, I know it's kind of an expression, I've got to get my beauty sleep. There's really something behind it. So when you're young, the skin in your face is smooth and firm because of the protein collagen. As we age, our body naturally produces less collagen, which is unfortunate, but it's a natural process. But lack of sleep makes it worse. And that's because sleep causes stress and stress disrupts collagen production. And then lastly, sleep and immunity. Your body uses sleep to produce hormones and proteins that bolster immune function, which prevents you from getting sick. This is why people who sleep only six hours a night are 50% more likely to come down with a virus than people who sleep until they're rested. Okay? What's the good news you might think? 
Well, look, it's, uh, we've got a Stanford basketball team here. There was a really interesting study on how they uh, kind of saw that sleep could become a bit of a superpower. So gonna give you, tell you about that study. So basically what they did, there was a squad of basketballers and they took um, a control group. So the control group just kept their normal sleep routine for five weeks, okay? And they tested them at the beginning and the end of the five weeks. So you've got two groups. You've got the control group who keep their normal sleep routine, get on average six and a half hours. Then you've got a group uh, of 11 players who were put in a separate experimental group who, were, who got eight and a half hours, so two hours more. And the crazy thing was that at the analysis uh, over the five weeks, these were players were almost like new players. So for those of you who play basketball, their, uh, their three pointers went up 9.2%. That's sizable. That's, 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 that's a kind of a, a good, good increase. Um, their free throws, which are like a penalty in basketball, went up 9%. And they even shaved a half a second off their, um, their sprint time. And so Stanford kind of thought, wow, okay, this is, these look like exceptional results, but is this just a fluke? And then they started rolling out these, um, these studies with, with other areas of their sports program, including American football and also swimming. So even swimming, um, they found that the swimmers were getting off the block at the start of the race quicker. So that's when you're diving into the pool. And they realized that actually the improved, uh, improving the, the, the longevity of the sleep was having an impact across the board. So folks, we're not all athletes, uh, but we all have things that we want to perform to our peak in, whether it's work, whether it's our relationships, whether it's our extracurricular activity, our pursuit. So just keeping that in mind that it can have a profound impact on your performance. So are you getting enough sleep? Just a couple of questions around that that can, can help you get a gauge on that. So count the number of times you say yes. So does a heavy meal, a low dose of alcohol, warm room, boring meeting, or lecture ever make you drowsy? That's number one. Number two, do you need an alarm clock to wake up at the right time? Number three, do you hit the snooze button to get more sleep? Number four, do you fall asleep while watching television? And lastly, do you sleep extra on weekends? Okay, so you'll probably have answered yes to, to, to one or maybe a couple of those. Generally, um, I would say the more that you're saying yes to, the more sleep deprived you are, okay? Most of us will, will definitely have said yes to about one of them. It's rare that, that somebody wouldn't have said yes to one, but uh, it's a good gauge on where you're at in terms of sleep um, and whether you could be getting more. So you might think, well, what's the ideal amount of sleep? Well, think back to your, your last holidays or use the next one to do that. So where you've got a couple of days where you can go without setting an alarm. How long did you sleep without the alarm clock? So did you sleep for nine hours? Did you sleep for eight and a half? Did you sleep for seven? Um, and also the second or third night of sleep might be the best productor because usually that first night is kind of a catch up night. At this point, what I want to mention is also the importance of uh, developing routines around sleep because the body, like with babies and children, they react well to routine. And that's why parents are so fixed on getting a sleep routine for their kids uh, as best as they can. And we're actually, even as grown up adults, we're the same, we respond very well to routine. So do keep that in mind as we're going through today's presentation. Okay, so we're looking at how to get restorative sleep. Um, so during the day, the do's. So let's start with the do's for during the day. Well, exercise. Movement tires the body, which increases the chances that you'll be sleep, sleepy later in the day. Now, the beauty of that is actually that exercise can be energy giving in the more short to medium term. But by the time it's got to the end of the day, that's when you'll feel the kind of the taxing nature on your body. Some people ask me about the best time to exercise. I would say, so not too close to, to when you're going to bed. So I would try and leave about four hours before you go to bed. Um, 
maybe maybe three it takes your body a bit of time to cool down after exercise and that's why if anyone here has played a, a match late in the evening or done a gym session late in the evening that can be a bit of a time to actually come down and kind of get your body temperature down after that and you mightn't feel sleepy for a few hours nutrition so um eating the right things has a big impact so this there's a point there but first of all just let me a break down actually what the study was for you. So it was actually taking two groups of people, uh, splitting a kind of a study group into two. One group was allowed to eat what they want, and the other group kept uh, sugary foods and saturated fats to a minimum and looked to increase protein um, and lentils. And the photo there is probably a good example of, you know, fiber rich foods with the lentils and the protein rich food with the salmon. So these kind of nice long energy dishes. What they found was that the group that was eating well, that kind of high protein, high fiber, they were getting to sleep in just 17 minutes. Whereas the people eating whatever they want throughout the day uh, were taking 29 minutes to fall asleep. So it's a pretty, it's you know, there's a pretty big contrast there. Another one is sunlight. So getting exposure to sunlight. This is where going back to our caveman days, you know, we were brought up for over 90% of human evolution to be out in the wild, to be hunting and gathering. Obviously we don't need to do that anymore, but if you are, please turn yourself into the police. Okay, enough, enough with the, the, the lame jokes, right? But this is important because from an evolution perspective, our bodies haven't developed to be completely comfortable in this new, more industrialized world, okay? So, how can we harness this information? Well, if you have access to a window in the office, that's great because you're more likely to get 46 minutes more sleep than people who are sitting at a desk where they're not beside a window or not close to a window. Um, how else could you do it? You could maybe go out, take your phone calls at work by the window or even go outside and take them. Ha maybe have walking meetings with some colleagues when you usually would meet for a coffee. Just get creative around it, maybe tie it in with the exercise goal and get out of the metro a couple of stops early for work uh, or on the way back from work. Get creative about ideas of easily incorporating sunlight, more sunlight and more exercise into your day. This is one that high performers, like the people on this call, suffer from over and over again. It is this kind of addiction to being busy and seeing an appreciation for exercise, or sorry, seeing an appreciation for rest, rest restoration and sleep as being lazy. Um, I hope by the end of today's presentation that you'll be convinced that it's actually a necessity and not um, just a luxury. So set a go home alarm. So what I mean is leave work at a reasonable time. What I suggest is setting an alarm about half an hour before you want to leave. What that does is it triggers you to wrap up the last most important tasks. And this is important, the most important tasks. There's no need to send off those three or four emails that are probably a good chance that the person's not going to respond to until tomorrow. Um, so just ask yourself, you know, do I really need to send these now? Can they wait? Can I get back home and look after myself this evening and maybe spend more time with the family, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever it is? So the don'ts for more kind of during the day, in that earlier part of the day, I'm putting caffeine in here because this is important. So I would say avoid caffeine after two. Well, you might say, why would I do that? Because coffee has a half-life, caffeine has a half-life of five, six hours. This means drinking espresso right now means that six hours from now, half of that caffeine will still be in your bloodstream. So that's why it's a good rule of thumb to avoid caffeinated drinks after two. Maybe swap it for a decaf or a herbal tea. Just uh, have a think around, around ways that you can do that. Okay, so we're going to go now into that, quarter, that sort of evening part of your day. You're just home from work, let's say. Okay, at the end of today's presentation, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you a little bit about the homework. And that's actually to do an audit in the evening. Um, whereby you become conscious of, so you come home, I keep saying come home, obviously in these times you're, you're at home already, but when you've finished your work, um, being aware of when work is done for the day, how am I spending my time between then and between getting into bed? 
and a, a, an audit can be a great way of just tracking what you're spending your time on. This is particularly important if you want to get into bed earlier and start getting more sleep. Because you might tell me that, okay, the one hour of Netflix is a non-negotiable. I love that Netflix episode. I love watching Peaky Blinders. Or uh, if you're like me at the minute, you're watching The Last Dance, Michael Jordan, uh, and The Bulls, really, really great stuff. But um, the important thing is to say, okay, well, if I if that's a non-negotiable, what about this half an hour that I'm perusing, you know, my 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 Facebook news feeds? Could that be cut out? And oftentimes people will find those little gems that they can cut out and just have a less stressed life then because there was something they didn't need to be doing. Be very deliberate on your target bedtime. Don't give me any of that bullshit that, you know, I'm going to try to get to bed earlier. Targets that are general just do not work. They do not work. So if you've got any big targets in your life, get them on paper. Get a few metrics around how you're going to do them. Set an end date. and Be just specific about it. How are you going to do it? How are you going to measure it? Are you going to be accountable to yourself or somebody else? So for this, set your target bedtime. So like, don't say, I just want to get to bed earlier. If you want to be up at 6.45 and you want to get, you know, your ideal time is eight hours, then you've got to say, right, well, then I need to be getting in bed at about 25 past, you know, very specific, I know, but I'm giving yourself that 20 minutes to actually nod off as well. Reading a book. So this actually ties in with something that's going to come later. So reading a book can be a great alternative to going on social media because it, it stimulates our desire for novelty or new information or kind of to get lost in another world. So research indicates that reading for as little as six minutes lowers our heart rate, eases muscle tension, and reduces stress by as much as 60%. Okay, so that's a pretty uh, you know, big statistic. It could be a good excuse to get back into reading if you've maybe started going towards Netflix a bit more. If another alternative is that's quite nice is the Audible app, whereby you can download your book in audio format and just plug it, plug in the earphones and listen. And that can be really nice for even walks as well. But uh, also in the evening, if you're just not in the mood for, you've maybe been, your eyes have been engaged all day. So you might just want to plug in the earphones and uh, do that instead. Relaxation is key. So having a bit of me time, I know particularly for parents, this can be difficult, but trying to come up with a system whereby you know, you've got that understanding with your partner that, you know, you get your bit of time to, to go off and, and, and do something for even if it's as simple as 10 or 20 minutes and sort of alternating that and making it work for each other. So relaxation in the evening is key. So ever notice how you yawn more often on a cold winter day? Well, it's because lower temperatures make us feel sleepy. And then you might be thinking, well, why are you going to advise us to take a bath or a warm shower? Well, actually, it's more to do with the contrast when you actually get out of the bath or the shower. Your, your temperature will drop abruptly in the kind of if you leave yourself 60 to 90 minutes before getting into bed. And then that can be very nice because our temperature needs to drop a few degrees Fahrenheit in order to get to sleep. And that can be obviously going to bed nice and clean into you know, a fresh bed and, and everything can just be a nice, um, just a nice sensation, nice feeling. OK, the don'ts for the evening time. Wine will not make you sleep well. It might make you sleep quicker. So beware, alcohol can help you sleep faster, but will impair sleep quality. So anybody with a Fitbit might be aware of the function that tells you about uh, rapid eye movement sleep, the deep sleep, and that kind of more lighter sleep you get. So it's generally in those categories. So alcohol can negatively uh, impact the amount of time you're, you're kind of getting the optimal time in those, in those zones. So a good rule of thumb, if the if the glass of wine or the beer is kind of a non-negotiable and just something you really look forward to, you don't have to cut it out altogether. But a good rule of thumb is to have, if you're going to be having a glass of wine, to have it three hours before you want to be asleep by. So if it's, if it's 11, you might have it before eight. Then if you want two glasses of wine, you just take it back an hour. Um, and consider having a glass of water alongside that as well. And then that leads into actually your water intake as well. So I'd advise if you're reasonably well hydrated, not to drink too much water in that last 60 minutes or any water. Um, obviously, if you're dehydrated, I would prioritize having a glass of water at that stage. But if you're not, I would uh, consider leaving it off because then you more of a chance you won't be able to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night. And that can help also with that sleep quality. All right. So next one. 
uh, spicy foods. So that heat from the spice will literally warm up your body as well. Um, which again, as I said, you want to be dropping that temperature in order to fall into a slumber. Not just spicy food, but be aware of taxing your digestive system too much um, before sleep. So any Spaniards or Italians on the workshop here will not be happy with me because I know they tend to eat later in the evening than, than uh, people from Ireland and the UK. Uh, but there is a, there's kind of method to that suggestion in the sense that your digestive system doesn't want to be turned on too much when we're in bed. And we'll just sleep easier if it's if it's had a chance to really digest that dinner before getting into bed. Do not spend too much time on screens or social media. As the day goes on, our willpower diminishes and our phones and Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and whatever else can just become seem irresistible. So you might think, okay, well, how do I get around this? Then I would say you gotta get very strategic about what you're not gonna do in the evening. So Personally, what I do is, uh, actually what I've started doing is often turning my phone off for periods of the day. Not everyone has that luxury, it depends on your work, but definitely you can put it on do not disturb, airplane mode. There's even these locks, for, like a phone lock that you can uh, buy on Amazon and set a timer uh, for when you'll be able to get it back out. I know it's extreme, but maybe some people will find that fun. Um, but I would advise putting it away in a cupboard somewhere so it's not easily accessible and replacing maybe where you had it with a, a book that you can just kind of read a couple of pages of every now and again. Um, so replacing it with, let's say, a more positive habit. All right, so restorative sleep, what I wanted to take away, just beware that exposure to light, physical activity and food choices throughout the day from, from early on in the day can have an impact on your sleep. So that's where a good night's sleep actually starts, contrary to popular belief. Number two, be conscious of alcohol, caffeine, and spicy food intake. Three, incorporate the do's that work well for you. There's no one size fits all, folks. So I'm giving you a lot of potential solutions or mini habits today. We, we are not robots. We'll never be able to incorporate all of these or you'd be on such a strict regimen that it might take the fun out of things. What I want you to do is take two or three things and start incorporating them bit by bit. And if they're not working, change in something else. But just kind of see this as a menu and you take what you want from it and what works for you. Try to leave the office at a reasonable hour. Um, I saw an interesting article recently about uh, what are the regrets of people on their deathbeds? And one of them was uh, that they spent too much time working. Um, and I thought that that was, that was kind of striking because um, I think that that will probably be something that many of us could encounter. So even if it just means taking a half an hour back uh, into your day and, and leaving that a little bit earlier and not sending those emails and maybe waiting until the next day. The other thing is you'll learn lots later on in this, in this course uh, in, in weeks to come about how you can actually get more done in less time and actually improve the quality. Have a strategy for social media and technology use. So, you know, um, some people have to be on email maybe in the evening if there's something particularly important with work. So maybe if you've got a colleague that you can rotate, rotate evenings with, that they maybe take the email some evening and you take it on another evening. So you want your sleep cave, like a cave, to be cool, dark and quiet. So when it comes to feeling rejuvenated, the quality of your sleep is much more important than the quantity of hours you sleep. Okay, so that's also for the people who maybe saw the six hours stat earlier and got very worried. Oh God, you know, I know people on this call, I know you're, you're healthy people in the sense that you, you exercise, you make efforts on nutrition. So this is also for the people who might think, okay, well, God, now I'm freaked out. I'm only getting six hours. But if you're getting six good quality hours, that is also, you know, that's an improvement and that's a good thing as well. And that will help your, you know, your immune system and things like that versus getting low quality sleep. So sleep quality is equally important. And having a cool, dark and quiet environment to do that in is um, very important. So noise, this might look all too familiar to some people. Uh, snoring can, uh, can do your head in. Um, so when our sleep is disrupted throughout the night, we're not able to get the deep sleep we need. But don't be anxious about this because there's several workarounds. Right, we're not all going to be able to, um, you know, afford the, the, say, the double 
glazed windows or we might be living in apartments that aren't ours so you can't just go and do that anyway but that is one solution so that's kind of blanking out noise from outside earplugs can be very good um but you need a bit of time to just get used to so don't give up on them after one day and also uh, just put a little bit of lubrication in your ear so they can just kind of fit in nice and easily um because sometimes people find that that's an issue the last one then is a white noise machine. I've actually got my one on here at the moment because it was a bit of a noisy neighbor there earlier playing music and I couldn't figure out where it was coming from. But um, what it does is it blanks out kind of that noise that can come from outside or from even closer to you. One thing I'd say about white noise machines are apps. White noise is a noise in and of itself, but it's a neutral noise that apparently kind of the brain reacts well to. It's not for everyone. Personally, I used it a few times um, and I, I wasn't mad on it, but potentially just didn't stick to it enough in order to help with my routine. So I might end up going back to it just out of interest, actually, for you. So a lot of times, actually, psychologists would put um, white noise machines in their waiting room so people can't hear what's going from the waiting room, what's going on in their private room with their clients. So that's what it does. It has that kind of noise blanking out effect. Temperature is a very interesting one. Um, a good rule of thumb is in and around 18 degrees Celsius in your room. So a lot of you might have those thermostats whereby you can set that. But also being aware that linens and the kind of PJs that you're wearing will have an impact on that. So you want to be as comfortable as possible. So, um, and I actually love that slide there. I think it's really cute with the, the, the little feet there in the middle. I, I only, only noticed it the last time I was going through them, but, uh, but what I would mention here on it is um, there's like a lot of people will actually sleep like that with one foot out of the cover. And they say that that's good because of the contrast between, you know, a cozy warmish body versus that little bit of coolness then on, on that part of your body that's outside of the covers. Light is a very important one. So hopefully I've convinced you by mentioning that part of the brain that is just not that clever at differentiating between the different uh, light sources. Um, so a couple of ways you can harness light to make that um, sleep routine better. You can use candles in the evening or you can go for 40 watt bulbs in, in lamps potentially uh, or use light dimmers. So you don't have to, you know, you don't have to, you'll have that stronger light when you need it. And night lights can be a good idea for bathrooms and hallways and um, stick to red and orange because it's the blue lights so the blues and the greens lights that kind of replicate that daytime light and the brain struggles to differentiate. Again, I would recommend any of the little pesky lights that annoy you, you can throw a little bit of tape over or something that blocks it out. And eye masks are also an option, but like the uh, earplugs, they take a little bit of getting used to. Yeah, so a, like a, a clear and peaceful space means a clear and peaceful mind. Um, if you ever heard of Hanmari, so this is a Japanese lady who's come up with her method of um, tidying, but also clearing out, you know, unwanted clothes, unwanted items around the house. And really, I think it's a little bit of form of becoming a bit more minimalist. Um, but also being thankful for all the different things that you've had, but knowing when to kind of say goodbye. And then there's a method around how you would fold your clothes, kind of group them together. And again, it's like anything, you can go very extreme on it or you can use 70% of it and, and get to a point which you're happy with. But having, you know, walking into the clear room on the right here, as opposed to the floor drope on the floor there, you know, that'll be, uh, we all know which one we prefer. So your sleep cave, a couple of takeaways. Remember how our ancestors lived in their caves and what we can learn from that. Dim lights as the evening goes on. So that's actually a process that you can do bit by bit. Um, again, something I found quite useful is turning off the main lights just when I know it's getting to that kind of hour before bedtime and I'll put on a few weaker kind of lamps uh, and things like that. Soundproof your sleep environment as much as possible. Yeah, set the temperature according to your preference. Look, there's a little bit of a range there, 18 to 20 degrees, they say. And generally what happens to the body in that process of going to sleep, it actually cools uh, a couple of de uh, degrees Fahrenheit in order to get to sleep. And a clear space equals a clear mind. Right, now we're getting towards, we've looked at during the day, we've looked at uh, in the evening. Now we're looking at that sleep runway, which is about that 60 to 90 minute window before actually uh, getting to sleep. So 
important, I would say, is access good news or empowering news or happy news. Please, 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 no news for 90 minutes before bed. Your brain does not need novelty or alarm right now. And let's be honest, that's what news is. We only need to like look at how COVID has completely taken over every feed on social media pretty much in the last uh, seven weeks. And of course, it's important that we're informed about it. Um, but if you're already, you know, not feeling the best, going on to that for 20 minutes or 30 minutes isn't going to lift your mood. All right, TV is actually okay as long as you have a blue blocking app, blue light blocking app, or maybe some glasses, and stick to the Brady Brunch. For those who don't know the Brady Brunch, that's kind of a very PG kind of program where not, nothing too crazy is going to happen or too stimulating. So it's probably better than Game of Thrones and Blood and Guts um, in that lead up to, to bedtime. You can leverage scent, so maybe it could be lighting a scented candle just to get you in and started on your sleep routine if that's something nice and immediately pleasurable to get you started. Uh, you could use one of those fragrance diffusers, things like that uh, can be really good. So that's worth bearing in mind. Nighttime rituals. So this is really, I think, beneficial. Stretching and meditation can be really good. I'm going to tell you just a couple of tips about doing this, though. Nighttime is not like your morning stretching or your morning kind of meditation. Um, it should be with a focus to de completely kind of de-stressing your body, becoming comfortable in your environment. So I would suggest doing longer stretches at nighttime. Okay, longer, maybe like Things like uh, for any of the yogis on the call who would know child pose, cobra, um, there's, there's plenty of them that you could do, but holding for about 10 to 20 seconds, choosing maybe five to 10 stretches. So maybe all, all in all, maybe coming to about five minutes. The simplest way to meditate, again, it's deep breathing. And a way you could do it for two minutes is a four second inhale two second pause, six second exhale, and just do 10 of those breaths. That comes to two minutes. What that does is just helps the body relax. It's like count to 10. You know, if you've ever been, seen a kid when they're really angry, you know, parent telling them just breathe, just breathe, or 10 to 10. It's a little bit like that, just getting your, your, your nervous system kind of calmed down and ready for that restorative sleep. Two things that you could incorporate at this stage of the day. I actually have a journal like that. So it's a five-year journal. So the beauty of it is you'll see like October 24th there. So it has five spaces and you can write in, you know, 2020, it would be up top now and you write in something good that happened that day or maybe a challenge that you overcame. Try to keep it kind of relatively short, something you're grateful for. The great thing about actually the five-year one that's quite fun is by the time it comes to next year, I'll be looking back on something that happened this year. And a lot of the time you can actually take confidence from that because you realize that seemingly insurmountable objectives, um, you overcame them and you found a way. And that can give you confidence for any things you're encountering now. Um, the other thing is a tomorrow list. So as a rule of thumb, work has no place in the bedroom. So you shouldn't have work laptops, you shouldn't have your laptop bag, Get it all out of your, your room uh, or out of sight at least, okay? But the tomorrow list is a bit different. That's just writing down in a little jot note thing about five things you'd like to get done tomorrow. It could be do the washing, do the grocery shop, and then it might be three work-related things, for example. Now, you might say, well, that is bringing work into the bedroom, but the mind is for holding ideas. Okay? Or sorry, the mind is for having ideas, not holding them. So when we get it down on a list, at least we've, we've kind of got that clarity. We've got it out of our mind. The other thing is that people can have some eureka moments maybe sometimes if they're just lying there filling this out. So if they come to you as you're, you're lying there, you can always write them down, get them out of your mind, and then look to get on to sleep. What to think about? Oh, so there's a great study on this. Um, they took a group of people who actually already found it difficult to sleep. They had three different kind of thinking methods they wanted them to use. One group was told to stay as normal, do what they usually do. They took an hour. One group was told to forget all their worries. They on average took 40 minutes. And one group was told to think very um, in a, in a folk, relaxed, focused nature about a pleasurable event 
like maybe a day out at the beach or a picnic or going to the cinema with a with a group of friends you feel you know really belonging with and things like that so and getting quite visual about that i think something like the background there is just beautiful in terms of it just it's spacious it's calm um and actually the alternative army methods which i want to mention to you is actually one that they used and apparently it could could help um people get off to sleep within minutes so there was two methods one of them was picturing yourself on a hammock in a pitch black room and you're just there it's just you this room and you are just completely peaceful in a spacious nice cool and comfortable environment and that's it pitch black you and this cozy cozy hammock you're not bothered by anything um the other method was actually picturing yourself in the middle of a lake maybe lying in in some kind of old uh, rowing boat or something like that and looking up on a beautiful clear sky lovely warm summer's day not a not a soul in sight and that sort of peaceful uh, i suppose aloneness and just calm what do i want you to take away from this make sleep enjoyable again like kids would often some kids would would, would often love to just kind of or would get to sleep so easy uh, it seemed like, God, how, how do they do that within minutes? And we need to get that sort of enjoyment almost or that kind of appreciation for sleep back because too many people dread bedtime. I have a theory on this. I think it's because doing busy work during the day can often like suppress thoughts or stressful thoughts that we're maybe not dealing with. And then they can come up then when we've finally stopped. And later on in my course, I will be talking about the power of your inner games, so your self-talk, and that's going to deal with some of those maybe stressful things that, that come up towards bedtime that we maybe try and keep um, suppressed throughout the day. The other thing, some people think it's just boring, and uh, they might start eating stuff and watching Netflix just because it's boring to go to bed, but you're depriving your body what it needs when you do that. So just making it pleasurable, so actually avoiding that Netflix and those late night snacks um, isn't as big a deal. It's like, I want to go and do this. So positive vibes. Um, so looking at uh, light material, any draining topics can wait. Oh, look, sometimes there might be a conversation you just need to have. You need to get it off your chest, get it off your heart. You, you do that whenever. But I mean things like, oh, say you're having problems with some of the workers, but you just want an evening off. You know, people are working on your house. Maybe that's something you can just leave off that conversation as to how you're going to deal with that until tomorrow. Just knowing those topics that can just wait in the overall scheme of things. They can wait till tomorrow. Prime your body for sleep with meditation or stretching and or stretching. You can do both. List and journal for clarity and perspective. NB, NB, NB. I looked up what that actually means. Nota bene. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right, but a bit of Latin for you there. So note well, do not change your routine on the weekend uh, where possible because the body reacts really well to it. Um, look, we're all social beings, love to go out, maybe have a drink and that and spend time with friends. So going to sleep at the exact same time every night is not possible. It's not realistic. Okay, it's, it can be a good goal for some people. But the thing is, you can actually, even when you stay out that bit later, go to bed that bit later, you can still keep that same routine in terms of the things you do to get your body ready for sleep. And then you might be thinking, well, what can I do when I just can't sleep? Um, you know, those nights where you just like, no matter what you're trying, it's just hard to get those off. Well, here's what you can do. When you when you like when you just can't sleep no matter what you try, um, so you'll see this is not a happy chappy there. Uh, counting sheep doesn't seem to be working. So let's first of all look at what to do and what not to do. So don't look at the alarm clock because this can add to your anxiety. Right, you start doing the mental mathematics like, am I going to get you know enough sleep, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Count sheep. So actually, it's not good because it's an arithmetic task. It can kind of keep us up. It can be easy to drift away from that kind of thought and forget where you were. The origin of this tradition actually came from sheep herders. Uh, so it's quite interesting because for sheep herders, obviously being able to count all their sheep meant that they could be relaxed and calm. So yes, it worked for them. Most of us, as far as I'm aware, are not sheep herders on the call. So this isn't going to hold true for us. So there's going to be some more useful things that you can do than that. Actually, okay, ironically enough, trying to fall asleep um, 
doesn't work. So it's almost like public speaking, all right? If you go up on stage and you notice that your hand's shaking or your voice is trembling, the more you try and control it, it seems the worse it can get. So it's a little bit like that. The more you're trying to force something, the harder it can be. And so Glasgow University did a study where there was groups and one about, one was asked to actually try and stay awake while in bed with their eyes closed, blah, blah, blah. And the other was asked to try and fall asleep. The group that was asked to try and stay awake actually slept quicker. So do not stay in bed for too long. It doesn't mean just if you have a restless two minutes that you have to get up and kind of, no. But if you're in bed, sort of, you know, 25, 35 minutes, whatever it is, and you just, you can get out. Or if you just, if you're in even 10 minutes and you feel, look, I'm just not, my head is just running here. I need to just, then what you can do, and sleep expert Matt Walker explains it in his Make Sleep Your Superpower TED Talk. It's excellent. So it could be one worth looking at for, for you folks in the, in the follow-up to this. Um, but it is important we associate our beds with a state of sleepiness. Um, so that, that is one worth bearing in mind. Now, here's what you can do. Read something light. Okay, so don't stay in bed too long because then you associate the bed with being awake. Read, uh, reach for a book and do not reach for any screens at this point, precisely because the blue light point that I made earlier. You can eat a banana or something light if you're feeling a little bit peckish. As it happens, bananas can help promote sleep because they contain uh, the natural muscle relaxants, magnesium and potassium, and are a carb source which help sleeping. So I was listening to a podcast recently and a guy mentioned that he used to, he would have rice at dinner time because he found it was is almost like a had a sedative effect on him and helped him uh, get off to sleep. Just remember a few things though about not getting to sleep because I don't want people to feel pressured going off today's workshop. Loads of people suffer from a lack of sleep, right? So we're all in the same boat. If you're having a night where you can't get to sleep, there's eight billion other people in the world, uh, and there's a good chance loads of them are not getting off to sleep as well. All right, so you're not alone. We tend to underestimate how much we sleep as well. So ironically enough, people who think they're really not getting a lot of sleep will, will actually overest or overestimate how much they weren't sleeping. So they might exaggerate, and sometimes as much as 100%. And also generally, if it's an occasional thing that you just get a bad night's sleep, think back and realize that I generally fared okay afterwards and caught up on my sleep the next night, All right? So not getting into panic mode, having a sense of perspective around it. This can help as well. If you've got something just going through your mind and you just can't get it off your mind, think in ink down endlessly until you just got everything off your mind and then just say bye-bye because you're not going to be able to resolve anything in the middle of the night. You're not going to ring anybody up at work or anything like that. You're going to tackle that thing the next day and you can say bye-bye to it for now. You've got it off your mind. You've got a bit of clarity and you can move on. All right, so optional homework is um, is something I'm going to go into. But just at this point, I want to mention just, this is coming towards the end. I want to mention one more study because I think it's important. Uh, if you're kind of chronically lacking sleep over time, um, they did an experiment over 14 days on three groups. And so one group was getting the eight hour sleep, so more in that recommended window. Group two and three, one group was getting six hours and the other group were getting four hours. For the first few days, the, so the group getting eight hours, their work, their work on the, the tasks that were given to them during the study stayed consistent. The group getting four and six hours declined steadily throughout the study. But the worrying thing, folks, was actually after the first couple of the days, the, the, the four hour and six hour groups stopped actually recognizing the decrease in performance and they thought they'd leveled off. So we actually get, I suppose, a degree of maybe arrogance about it, that, oh no, I'm getting by, I'm functioning. But that would just be to question you a little bit on that and maybe then hopefully sell that, getting a look at some of this homework could be a good idea. So three things are gonna be made available to you in the follow-up to this. The audit sheet, the planning document and journal advice. The audit sheet's excellent because you just write down how you're spending your time after work until you get into bed. I would only, I'd say you can do maybe just one night, maybe two nights if you wanna, Kind of get an idea uh, on what way you're altering it a little bit. 
seven days to better sleep. So I, I can share the recording of this presentation with you afterwards in case you want to go back over anything. But just choosing maybe one action that you'll either do during the day, during the evening, or in the 90 minutes, kind of, or even say 30 to 60, sorry, you see on the sheet there, in that sleep runway, okay? You can do one of each, it depends. Take this in, at your own pace, um, it's optional, but I do think it's, it's, it's well worth having to think about. And the last one is just a couple of triggers to get you to think about how, if journaling is of interest to you, how you could start doing it. Um, and it's a really good way of just, you know, what went well today, isn't that kind of a nice way of rounding out your day? Uh, looking for some appreciative moments um, and it kind of puts you to bed in a good mood and not in that sort of worrying frame of mind. This is my little brother, he's not so little anymore, uh, he's 27 um, and he's pretty much outgrown me uh, and that happened a good while ago but anyway this is him as a baby so hopefully look you can move on onwards and upwards and sleep peacefully like a baby i know a lot of parents would say that's bullshit my baby doesn't sleep peacefully <laughs> but uh look folks i hope you've taken plenty from today um I'm just going to wrap up with the last couple of uh points now on where this falls in with the wider program next week we're going to look at momentum building morning routines i'm going to suggest why you should be having m m's in the early part of the day not the sweets um, but how that can really massively kickstart your day i think it's a shame when people wake up with big ambitions for their day and by the time they've actually started their work they're already feeling beaten down um, so i wanted to share some big learnings that i've had in terms of just arriving at work uh, arriving to your work in that right frame of mind and having started the day well and how you can kind of carry that momentum going forward and actually, a lot of it is about what can you cut out and how you can simplify your routine. So I'm not going to be adding to the things you have to do here and uh, just getting very strategic about. it. So as ever, um, just want you to, you know, be aware that I'm contactable at my, uh, so looking at, you know, uh, performance trainer gmail.com there in terms of my email, got the website. Most of you know me uh, pretty well, so you've probably got my, my WhatsApp number as well. And anyone doing the program, the full program, they're gonna have access to WhatsApp support throughout the 10 weeks. And that's where it's really vital because when questions come in, they can ask me that. So folks, just keep looking after mind, body, and soul. Contact me if you ever need information, you know, for yourselves, for your companies on health and wellness, um, because I can more than likely help or definitely put you in the right direction. And look, hopefully today you've taken a big step towards unlocking your personal potential by concentrating on a very underestimated element of health and wellness, which is sleep. So thank you very much. And um, we're gonna have the Q&A now. I'll stop sharing the screen and we'll have a nice chat around this. And I think Margot, you'll be able to, to stop the recording for us as well uh, at this point, potentially. If not, I'll be able to cut it afterwards. So that won't be shared.